Hello, my little acorn crop. <laughs> so, as a complete departure from the political videos or the news videos, we're going to talk about going bitless. And most of you are like, what the fuck? Yeah, so uh, it's a horse thing. And as you know, I own one. And so I thought I want to, you know, I thought I'd talk about it. Um, I, to be honest, I'm still on the fence about writing bitless. And I, I don't know. I'm on the fence. Um, a lot of people say you should ride the bitless uh, just because it's nicer for the horse. Other people think that you shouldn't ride bitless, so that, you know, riding with a bit is okay. And, you know, I've read a book called The Horse Crucified and Risen. So that book really kind of convinced me that maybe I should try riding bitless. I mean, like, you know, what the hell? <laughs> what, what, what is there to lose except my life? Anyway. So, I have set out before me, that you can't see, um, the horse's equipment and old equipment and, um, yeah, it, most of it's like filthy, so don't, don't come for me, because I don't use this. <laughs> don't come for me, I don't use this stuff every day. So, the thing that I'm riding her with now, or maybe I should start with what I used to ride her with. Um, so what I started riding, well not started, um, what I did ride my horse with for the longest time is this bridle right here. I'm missing the curb chain, obviously, and the reins, because I haven't used this bridle in year, literally years. Um, but this is what I used to ride her with. It's got a high port long shanks so it's got a lot of leverage when you pull back um and literally i rode her with this for years this is what this is her bridle well this is actually my other horse's bridle but in her bridle now um what stopped me from riding her with this bridle was she got a summer sore on the corner of her mouth so that would have been like right here this is where the corner of her mouth would lay and so i couldn't ride her with this so um, when, when it was healed, obviously I didn't ride her with when it was all messed up, but when it was healed enough that I could ride her, I started riding her with this, which is what we call a mechanical hackamore and her nose goes here and you can see it's got a lot of leverage with these long shanks. I do have a curb chain, <laughs> um, and reins because I have more recently ridden her with this. But you can see when you pull back on the reins, maybe, you can see that it creates, you know, a nice crushing force on her face. I'm using nice facetiously. Um, so it's not that nice because this is bicycle chain in, in here underneath this rubber piece. So this is all metal. So I was riding her with this. And... I think she liked the hackamore a lot better than than um, this bit, and then I read that book, um, Horse Crucified and Risen, so I changed to just riding her with her rope halter. This is where her ears go, this is where her nose would be, and you can see it's a one to one ratio when I pull back, it's one to one, so if I pull back with one pound of pressure, that's all that's going on there, whereas these leverage bits, when you pull back, it increases the leverage, you know, so it turns my one pound of pressure into like 10 pounds or so. I don't know the math exactly on that. Um, so I started riding her with the rope halter and the hackamore, putting them both together, which I don't really like doing, but you know, I did it, you know, just because what happens if you ride her with both is that the rope halter under, ends up underneath the the hackamore and it just, you know, seems less effective. So I rode her like that for a while with both things. So with the rope halter and the hackamore. And then, you know, I was like, geez, I don't know how long I'm going to do this. I guess I'll ride her with both things for a while. And then I got lazy <laughs> and decided that 
I was just gonna put the rope halter on and screw it and I think the day after or maybe that same day I did that or a couple days later she started crow hopping and all I had was this this little rope halter and I managed to you know stop her from crow hopping and crow hopping is just it's not bucking but it's kind of like bucking it's bucking if they didn't put their head down um, so what was I saying? So I was able to stop her from crow hopping with just a rope halter. And so that, that convinced me right there that I, you know, you're able, or I was able to ride her with the rope halter. Now, I will give you this caveat. I just trail ride. I haven't competed for years. Like, I think the last thing I competed in, I was like 19. And I'm old now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mature woman. Um, so, yeah, I, so my, my thought might be is that if you want to compete, you might have to use a bit. I hate to say it. I don't know. Um, I think with some horses, you might have to use a bit. I don't know. I, it depends on what you and your horse can um, compromise on and come to an agreement on using. And another reason I wanted to try the bitless thing was because I do the, you know, I try to do the natural horsemanship thing. I've been actually, I've uh, been to a um, John Lyons, John Lyons, no, Ray Hunt, I think it was Ray Hunt um, school, or, you know, they, they taught that method. It wasn't my hymn, but it was the, the school taught that method. And so your first mode of communication with the horse is the round pen. That's the first one. And then the next thing, because in the round pen you have the fence and you're controlling their direction and their speed. And then once you build from there, your next mode of communication, your second mode, is going to be your halter and lead rope. And this is going to be like a huge mode of communication with you and your horse for a long time, I mean, for all their life. Um, so it seemed weird to me because I, I always thought or I always was taught that you start your horse um, with a bozel, which is like kind of like a rope halter. I don't actually, I thought I had a bozel, but I apparently don't. Um, because I, I know I rode her with, with one, so I don't know what happened to my Bozelle, but who knows, probably got stolen or some shit from the stable. Um, so you start with a Bozelle, which is a hard, um, what do you call it? I can't remember the type of leather. It's not leather, it's rawhide. That's it. It's going to be a rawhide covered noseband, so it's going to be rigid, more rigid than a rope halter, and then you graduate up into a snaffle, and then you would graduate up into a bit like this, which when I started thinking about it, was stupid. If I can control my horse with this, why would I need to progress from a halter to a bit to a big bit? So, and, and maybe it was just you know, some deficiencies in my training. Um, like I said, I, I'm a Western rider and I kind of ride by the seat of my pants, as I think a lot of Western riders do. <laughs> um, I stopped actually showing horses, you know, um, many years ago. I used to show Western, Western pleasure, and I did show English for a short time. Um, but then, you know, I learned in Gymkhana, I could use whatever equipment I wanted to on my horse because in shows, there are certain things you can and cannot use. And like, for instance, this curb chain in Western riding or Western horse show is illegal. You have to have a double chain or like a leather strap. And then a ha hackamore is definitely illegal or it was back in the day when I was showing. It may have changed now. I don't know. Um, so I couldn't ride with a rope halter. Uh, so in Jimcana, I could ride with whatever equipment I wanted on whatever horse I wanted, you know, just as long as I went faster than everyone else. <laughs> um, and then after that, I started team penning, which I really loved. And if there was team penning around me right now, I really, I would do it. I would do it, you know, <laughs> but I don't think they team pen out here. They do roping. Um, 
But I love team pinning, team sorting. That stuff was really cool. I was pretty good at that. Um, yeah, so I don't know if I could use this team penning. I might have to use a Hackmore or a Bozelle or something that's got more force. But I, I would like to try not to, you know? And in that book, again, The Horse Crucified and Risen, the author talks about iron, the iron, how iron is bad. So any kind of iron around horses doesn't mix. So you don't want big bits made of iron. You don't want little bits made of iron. Um, and I read the book because I wanted to know this guy's training secrets because apparently he can train horses to do amazing things without ever touching them. And I wish I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's my wish. I would love to do that. Um, but for now, I am riding this horse, which actually this horse is, is, um, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say anything bad about her. I have a lot of respect for this horse, but she is not experienced when it comes to being ridden. And so me being able to ride her with a rope halter is, I think, amazing. And I'm very excited that I can. And what was I going to say? Yes, I've had this horse for a long time, but I've never put the time in on her that I should have. So we're, we're doing that now. So better late than never. And then I'm going to show you some video of how you kind of start them. I, I mean, I'm kind of jumping because you're going to start all of your rope halter stuff on the ground. I mean, and it all flows beautifully with the natural horsemanship stuff. Some people like it and some people don't. I'm actually kind of shocked that people do things the old way. And I'm kind of, you know, <laughs> I really am. Like the, the whole breaking of horses and, you know, getting them on and bucking, you know, bucking them out. People still do that. That's crazy to me. But, you know, what do I know? I just know my little corner of the world. Um, I don't know where I was going. Oh, yes. So I have, I'm going to include some video um, of me writing her and showing you some technique or the technique I used or thought my theory of how you teach them to go bitless um, because and, and you'll see but we humans tend to think linear we think you go forward and you go backward you know but horses can move in all directions at any time so that's one of the, the challenges to riding them, is they can move in any direction at any time, on a whim, and nothing moves faster than a horse, especially when you're on it. Um, <laughs> so um, you have to start thinking, and you'll, you'll see, I'll say it in the, the next part of this video, um, you have to think in terms of circles. Um, like if you have a horse that runs away, that's a runaway and just goes into a dead run and you can't pull back hard enough or stop it, if you can turn it in a circle, then you can, you know, eventually stop. I mean, it's not going to be fun. You're not going to enjoy the experience. Um, and you may be in really big circles of a horse running really fast and then littler and littler and littler and littler and littler until it quits. Um, but yeah, you, that, you have to think in terms of circles. You can't just think that I'm going to pull back. My little one pound of pressure pulling back might not do anything. But I've seen horses that could take a bit like this and run away. And it didn't matter how hard you pull. They just open their mouth and that like completely negates the port of the bit. It just, you know, they would have the pressure from the curb chain. But I've seen horses run away with big bits like this. I mean, if they're, they're going to run and they want to, you know, they need to get away, then they're going to do it. Nice little side pass. Look at that. You no, know, she's bending her head around a little more than I'd like. Um, so, of course, my uh, voice narration didn't work. Um, or my miking didn't work. It was just just awful. So, here I'm flexing her. And this is the thing you're going to want to do. And I only have a lead rope and halter at this point. I do actually ride with reins, but two fingers right to my foot. And then she wants to eat. And then two fingers, and that's how soft and supple she is. And that's what you want, because if they brace their neck, you're not going to be able to turn them. See, soft and supple, two fingers. I'm not even turning her now. 
There's no pressure. The lead rope's loose. She's just doing it. <laughs> See, there you go. It's dangling there by your shoulder. So this is how you're going to start, is just being able to get them to flex their neck. Um, and then pr you're going to progress from there to doing one rain stops and then you're probably going to, from there, just start riding with two reins. But see, the danger of riding with two reins is that you, you know, you are probably going to pull straight back and expect her to stop. And that's the thing, is that you can't. You have to, to flex them to stop them. To, you have to pull on one rein more so than not. So... You get lazy when you have two reins, and you and I've even done it where I pull straight back, and it's like, oh yeah, she, that's my, that might not work. We want her to go in a circle. Um, so you're gonna want to do this exercise that I just did with her, where I flexed her neck. You're gonna want to do that a lot, um, just to get them soft and supple, and just knowing, you know, that's gonna be their first okay instinct of okay, they want me to do this. You want them to, you know, clearly know what you're trying to accomplish. Because, like I said, if they brace their neck, you're in trouble. Um, yeah, <laughs> you're not going to be able to turn them if they brace their neck. So that's the one thing. But again, I mean, how is that different than them just grabbing the bit in their mouth and running? So, uh, so there's my little kind of intro. I mean, very, very brief intro of how to go bitless. And with that, good night, America, wherever you are. And I hope you have a good day.